All right, Zane, let's go. Zane, <laughs> where, uh, how has it changed your life? Yeah, yeah. Um, the biggest thing I would say, it, it opened my eyes up to uh, different cultures, experiences. You know, you, you know, here we live a certain way, and then you go to other places and you get out and kind of explore and you get to see things in a different light. You get to, you get to experience different cultures, you know, sights, sounds, food, you know, whatever. And it's all, and you come back here, it's like, damn, you know, we got it good, don't get me wrong, but it's like, it's like a whole new, like a whole new world that you, even, that you read about it, but like when you experience it, it's 10 times, it's 10 times better than what you read, you know what I mean? Like, you know, going, going into the desert, like, yeah, I've seen the business a thousand times already, but but when you actually get to experience that and you actually there and you look around in any direction and all you see is desert, it's like, oh, this is a lot, you know what I mean? Or or you know, you're um walking through the Coliseum or you're in the Vatican, like this is like history. This, this is a part of history. This is stuff like I've read about this in books, but to actually be able to see it, you know, and see it and take it in with your own eyes, like that's what's the biggest thing for me, you know. And I, I'm a fan of the culture of, of you know of where I go. I try to kind of know a little bit about where I'm going before I go. So the culture aspect is always good because I'm kind of a low key history buff. So I like to know about the things that that like excites me. So it, it's it's good for me. Yeah, I, I share. I, the same, <laughs> I I would say that it's easy to to feel that, especially because Rome has so much history specifically. But bro, like I grew up. I tell people for me like. I grew up in a single parent home in South DeKalb County. When I look at the schools and I look at, I'm not supposed to be here in the Vatican, bro. Like, <laughs> like, I mean, bro, like, I, I mean, one God is good too. Man, when I see a crease, man, I run through it and it's been able to, those opportunities, them little things that kind of add up kind of put me in certain places and it gave me the attitude of, bro, you can do it. When you sitting there in that Vatican or when you sitting in the Coliseum or when you sitting there in certain places that you're like, bro, like I'm here. Like, well, some, what's next? <laughs> like, what am I about to do next? You know? Inside of a pyramid. Or, you know, you're right. You have those moments and you just like, I can't believe I'm here. Like, I just, I saw that in my history book, but I never thought that I would be able to touch something that was created years and years and years ago. Like nobody, but I think we, but I think we also have a certain, not arrogance about it because it's like now, it's, now I don't get that feeling to say, I just, I don't feel like I can't believe I'm here. It's like, I appreciate that I'm here because now I feel like I'm going to try to go, you know, everywhere. So I think, and I know how you guys act when you go, Going somewhere with you guys is not like going somewhere with a random person who we appreciate it, but it's not going to be that whole shock factor where you know they're going crazy. You know that we've type been of stuff. Before. It's not, like yeah. when people say act like you've been somewhere before. Like yeah, we've done it, so it, it's a little different for us. But I look at it like, like, and, and I don't want to offend nobody, but like. It's not like everybody in our community, or at least specifically mine, it's not like everybody is rich. Like one of my trips and I and, and that is on my list. And I hate it because like when people go left, I like to go right. Like I had this discussion, like I've never been to Jamaica and I probably never go because everyone goes there. So I go, instead of Jamaica, I go to the Cayman Islands, right? So yeah. like one of the things I was planning the French Riviera, like I was gonna touch. Yeah. Came, went, go to the film festival, then go to Morocco for Monaco Grand Prix, and then go to um, Saint Tropez. And literally, I already planned out the flight. I was going. I found a flight to get me there for like under five hundred or right at five hundred. And then I was just going to take the train up to each spot. But yes. to me, when I look at that, I'm like, I kind of reflect, and I'm like, but bro, like you were just one kid at a DeKalb County school, grew up off of Boulder Crest. And you're not, and like, how many people who came from where you came from doing it? You know what I mean? And I feel like I got the means to do it. I can go in there. I feel like I can go in there, anywhere in the world, and I, I really can. Like, literally, there's nothing from stopping me from booking a trip anywhere in the world right now. And how many people who came from that can say that? And how many? So when well, I, I think that's like, 
that and it's not necessarily being the richest. It's just a matter of the know-how. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And just to be there, I think that's when I have those kind of moments. Like you said, there's an expectation because we've been here before, but sometimes it's kind of like that. Wow. Like when I was a kid, I didn't have no thought that I would be here. Yeah. And I, I will say that's the that's the Tostino was plan. That's the reason why, you know, you can do that type of stuff. And so I know what I mean by Tostino's plan, because I did get into <laughs> some trouble at one point in time where, you know, I wanted to make sure I saved up money. Um, so what I'll do, people, I think people watch stuff we do and they feel like yeah. we just spend money when we don't. Yeah. And Zane can tell you, I ate, you know, 50 cent Tostino's pizza for 30 days and 30 nights. I'll take, you know, for me to do the stuff I want to do, I'll take away from other things. I'm very disciplined <laughs> when it comes to stuff when I want to make something happen. So if I want to save up money, I'll eat those. I'll fill the freezer up and eat Tostino's pizza every single night. And I, and I like them. Just make them a little crispy, you know, so and it doesn't take much money to do that. Um, but I'll take away from certain things that people people feel like are a necessity when they're not. I mean, beer money will get you to another country and will get you a great experience. So cut back on the beer, put the money up, and go have a great experience. And I think once somebody does it once, they'll see that it's not a big undertaking to, you know, go, go experience in life, go explore the world. But that's the know-how. Like, and that's kind of what I was saying. I know how. I know, like, once you've done it, you're like, I can do this again. I can do this again. I can do right. that again. Like, oh, all I got to do is just stack up on Tostino's pieces. Um, here's, a, here's a question real quick. Just me. And, 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 like, you know, and interacting with coworkers and all, and it's, it's always a topic, you know, whether you're doing for vacation or you going somewhere you've been. Like, when you start recanting the trips that you went on, and you got like uh bar reactions or stuff like that from uh COVID, like how you going here, that, that type of deal. You ever got that before? I told him I sell drugs. So <laughs> so uh a couple of years ago, I actually, actually right before we went to Rome and, and Greece, um we got lunch with a bunch of coworkers, you know, uh we're hanging out, you know, whatever, whatever, you know, we're talking about vacation. Everybody, I'm going to Panama City, I'm going to Orange Beach, I'm going here, I'm going there. And I was just kind of like, I'm gonna chill because I don't really wanna She's on their parade. I'm just going to chill out. I ain't going to say that. And they got, what you doing? I said, ah, I'm going to where? And the guy goes, ah, oh, he's going to Europe for two weeks. And the whole table was like, how the hell are you going to Europe? I was like, well, I saved my money. Like, you you got a boat. I I took a trip. It, it, it's interchangeable. But, you know, I got to look like, how, how are you going on this trip? We make more money. I was like, well, that's fine. But I save. I literally put money aside every pay period. For this occasion, like I still got the money for a visa sitting in my account right now because I can't use it. So I'm just gonna add on to next year so it'll be even better trip. Or well, you know, the, the, now I have two trips paid for by the time it's you know, all said and done. But I'm like, you get that look like, dude, like I saved this cash up, you know. This was hard. this was sacrificing me to put up, you know, X amount of dollars every time I get paid just to go travel. Like I just tell people whatever because it's none of their business. But I tell people whatever. It, if you know how to do it, you know how to do it. All the money that they spent on flights to LA, I don't pay for a flight to LA because I yeah. use my points. Or a flight to yeah. Houston or when I do those games and stuff. I don't pay for yeah. those flights. I use my points. Yeah. All my money I mean, is on international flight. And then I'll I'll look at, yeah. yeah, I mean, I'll look at a flight to Houston. Like if it's if it's not real cheap, if it's like a couple hundred dollars, yeah, it's I'll, just pay dollars. I'll take the point. I earn the yeah. point. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. you know what I mean? I, 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 think I, I think I'll get more off the points. You know, Accruing points versus, you know, using my points. I mean, let me go ahead and get those 300 points, whatever it is, you know. But, like, when whatever. we went to Draw Wedding it, on a Memorial Day or uh, Memorial Day weekend and those flights were, like, three, $400 to get to Seattle, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't paying cash for that. Oh, that, that's the type of points they here. That's <laughs> another one I booked on that Friday or uh, Thursday. He sure did. He <laughs> sure did. I mean, he had a wedding but, uh, Memorial Day weekend. Those flights were going to be up. Yeah, oh, I want for to pay cash. I, um, when you see that that flight to Miami from Atlanta for under with eighty bucks, then yeah, I'll pay. Yeah, take my little point. But, so I got another friend that um, travels all the time as well, and so she has a loft, or she had a loft, but she set her loft up as an Airbnb. So whenever she went on a on a trip, she would rent her you know, rent her loft out so for that week. 
and she would end up making enough money to pay for, sure. you know, the rent for that money. You can think about it, Airbnb in the, in the middle of Atlanta, it's not cheap. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you can look at it as if she paid for the trip as well as, you know, whenever she's gone. Because think about it, if somebody travels as much as Saucy and you rent your spot out every single time. Now, for me, that was a big change because I have so much stuff in my in my spot that I couldn't, you know, put it up. So, you know, she's a minimalist. She keeps the stuff where she can put it all in the closet, you know, and she sets up the home so that nothing that she has out, she's not worried about it. And that's how she travels. So, I mean, like I said, I learned things from you guys. I learned things from everybody. I, I watch people. And if they can make it happen, I look at it like, okay, I can make it happen. You know, I just need to make a few changes or a few tweaks, change that to Stino's plan to make it happen. I, if I could, like, I really do hustle as far as in terms of points for airline flights and stuff like that. If I could figure out, like, how sauce hustles for them hotel points and stuff, I would be having flat out free trip because what I do in order to get all these airline miles, she does it for hotel. And yeah. she be staying in some real boss hotels. I be staying in some yeah, hotels you getting flyer miles. But when we went to Houston, the hotel she stayed in versus the hotel I stayed in, bro. Oh, they yeah, I pick a hotel based upon how many miles, airline miles they're going to get. So, so yeah. I mean, I can say on that as well, that's kind of like my whole Delta plan that I stick with Delta. So on the hotels, you know, pick a chain that's everywhere and that has multiple things. So the chain that I have, like, we go to, it was canceled this year. What's it called? Uh, not Mardi Gras, but uh, oh, Essence. So yeah. when I go to Essence every year, again, because I book last minute, the only thing that's left is something like the Ritz. So I usually stay at the Ritz. The last two or three years, I stayed at the Ritz. But I was able to stay there because I stay in that chain of hotels. So I, I'm using the points for that. So I don't really pay much for it. But people think I'm really coming out of the pocket to do that. But that's my plan. But the problem, the reason I, I have issues with it or can't do that is because I use the hotel stay to get more airline points. Yeah, you yeah. So I go through the airline to book my hotel stay. So like when I stayed in right. Houston... I went through Southwest Hotels, Southwest Hotels, and booked it through them, and then got like fifteen thousand miles for the state. So that's the reason why. So you still winning? Also, like the um, hotel. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's, still, it's still a win though. I'm like trying to say it's still a win. Yeah, it's just that I'm not getting like the upgrades that Sauce get. Like Sauce will pay for a hotel and stay in like the the Taj Mahal. Mm-hmm. When we was at uh, when we was in Houston and we staying in. Looking all down at the state of Texas <laughs> pool, I'm sitting there like it made me immediately. I I went back to my hotel and I looked at the, the pool outside my window. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, that, that pool was crazy though. That pool was crazy. It, it was crazy. And we sat out there all night. We I went out there all night. We went swimming around the state of Texas. And I got back to my room and I looked at my pool. I was like, bro, I got. I'm thankful for the point. Like, I got fifteen thousand miles for staying at that hotel. Okay, so you got to put the picture of the the pool here because they don't know what you're talking about. So yeah, 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 yeah. You got to put that. Yeah, you that pool got in. Thank you for pointing at it. <laughs> <laughs> That's it yeah. Here's the pool here. Make sure you guys go like, subscribe, all that stuff. I've been watching YouTube too. So I have to figure um, that part out. Because she hustled those hotel hotel points like this. But, but it's not always. So I heard about that hotel months ago, probably a year ago. And I knew that if I ever went to Texas, I wanted to stay there. So it's like certain things you see and you kind of make note of it. And so since we said we were going to Texas, I was like, oh, this is my opportunity. And that hotel was a Marriott hotel. And I knew have a Marriott Credit card. Yeah, that's the point I was getting at because when we went to the little store down there, I saw what you swiped. And I was like, dang, she she owned them hotel points, them hotel my I was like, man. Yeah, I do I do you but you gotta do that if you travel like y'all say I do 20 times a year. So And Keely, so you know Nate, Nate's older brother put me on an Amex. 
And before I really knew how it worked, he was really getting over on us. So like, we, when we would go shopping, <laughs> we think it's probably laughing, but we would go shopping every year. We'll do a big shopping trip every year. He would pay for everybody's stuff. And this was before people had like cash out and you would just cash out people back or whatever. I'm thinking, man, it's just a really, really nice guy. <laughs> but he's a nice guy, but it's not that. He just maxing out on Amex points. And when I started thinking about how many trips, how many times we did that, how much money he spent on his Amex, you know, he's just smart. And that's that's the reason why I ended up getting it and having conversations with him. So I had a conversation with him. Well, I'm all off subject. But I had a conversation with him after that, you know, talking about the Amex, how it worked. And then he kind of pulled me to the side, talked to me about his home, you know, what he does there. Like, it was way before he was retired. He's retired now, but his home was paid for. You know, he just put me up on game. So it's similar to what you guys are saying. You know, I just watch people who do the things that I want to do, and then I don't have a problem asking questions to see, you know, how they make it happen. Because if they make it happen, you know, we can make it happen. Yeah, I, I, I mean, everyone, you don't have to worry about it as far as being off subject because it's game. And everyone who watches this is going to benefit. It's probably going to split this into two episodes. For example, I use a Capital One Venture card. And that's one of the ways in which I get points. Like I'm, everything, my iTunes, everything is hooked up to that, that Venture card. And I'm just steady getting miles, 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 miles. When I take Ubers wherever I go, I never pay for an Uber. It charged my venture card, and whenever I get back to Atlanta, I just redeem those Uber charges. So I'm never really paying for Uber. That doesn't mean that when we go somewhere that I'm paying for Uber. What I'm saying is I redeem them off the point. And, it, and I mean, what you're saying now, like, my well, Emmett, me. I'm doing everything on it. So my gas, I, like, once we start talking about that, I, I, I put everything on it. I, I rarely use my... Um, ATM card. I can even remember one time I forgot what the pe- what the pen was on it because I never used a pen. Someone asked me to put in the pen and I had to put the stuff back. But I put my gas and all that type of stuff on it. The stuff that I'm going to use on the regular, any bill that I can put on it, I'm putting putting there to, to build up those points. For the sake of time, I know I gave y'all a list of questions. I didn't think, like, I'm, this information is great. Um, we'll just have to figure out another time to for the rest of the questions because I know, I think I think a lot of these questions are good questions and questions that will help people. I'm going to start skipping around. How many of y'all have global entry? And is it worth it? Yes. Well, um, I don't yeah, have it. But the one so, time, the last time I traveled, I got it via somebody else. I was like, man, this is perfect. That, that whole waiting in that general, the, the general public line, yeah, that, that, that wasn't moved. So, like, that's going to make me sign up for that. Based upon that. $15 more than um the um pre-check. It's just an extra $15. Exactly. Yeah. I will leave whoever I'm traveling with if they don't have it. Because I'm not standing in that line. And I tell them that before we even start. I'd be like, do you have global entry? If they say no, I'm saying, okay, boo. If we didn't pay together, that means they're not getting on my global entry. So I'm going to have to see them at baggage claim. And that's the that's the part I wanted to bring up about it. I get to skip ahead of all of y'all, but I'm still going to meet y'all at baggage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, so, I mean, it's up to but, y'all if y'all think it worked. Like, I, I, I enjoy just walking past everybody. <laughs> but y'all well, I'll say at baggage claim anyway. Oh, yeah. I'll say I know it's definitely worth it, and that's just from, you know, traveling all the time, like, even when it's from work. So, I'll say, Keely, once you had that bad experience, like, I've been in Delta – where, you know, coming in, it's wrapped from the front door, wrapped every which way that you can go in, and they send it down a long hallway in the back, and it felt like it was no AC going on. And then I know I, it sounds like I'm doing a, um, an Amex commercial, but if you had a platinum, it, you get global entry free with it. And then, you know, people talk about the fees that you pay. So let's say if it's 500 or something like that a year, it's a deterrent for a lot of people but they're not really doing the math on it. So when you get in the Skyline free, I think they charge you, what, 20-something bucks to get in there every time, you know, normally. But when you go in, they have free food, free snacks, free drink. When you go in the airport, it's, you know, $12, $15 just for a Popeye's biscuit or something like that in the morning. So for somebody that's going to travel frequently, you're definitely going to make your money back there. So I actually sat down and, and counted it out from the global entry. I think it's pre-check. They, do, they give you a certain 
allowance for this, like a hundred dollar allowance for pre-check. You get global entry free. That's eighty dollars. You're already up to like two hundred dollars there. When I counted what you get back from, um, you know, the Sky Lounge and that the food is free. To me, that already adds up. You know, for the price that you have to pay for it for the year, because that's already bringing it back down to where what you would pay for a normal card, and you're getting all those perks. I and here's the thing. Now, there's other cards where you don't get all those perks, but there are cards that probably doesn't have that Amex fee where you get where they you get a credit for global entry. So you don't get all those additional perks, but there are travel cards where they'll pay for your basically pay for your global entry where they'll give you a hundred dollar credit. But either way, I, I think it's worth it. Like you said, you do the math on it, it's worth it. For me, it doesn't get necessarily get me out the airport quicker because you still got to wait on bags at baggage claim, but I don't have to stand in that long line. Like I'm already right. there. I'm already in front of the conveyor belt and everybody like they kind of jump in front of each other to get as close to the conveyor belt to get your bag. I'm already there. Any of y'all ever do a cruise? I, I feel like a cruise is for old folks, but I know a lot of people who really enjoy it, but I don't go ahead. Who you did a salsa? You did a cruise. I've done probably 12 cruises in my life. Yeah. I don't think I don't want to do another one unless it's to Antarctica. That's my last cruise, hopefully. But cruises are cool. Cruises are for, I think they are a inexpensive way to get to a, a place that. But by the time you get there, I've already been there for a week. <laughs> yeah, but again, it's an inexpensive way to get somewhere where you can go and not have to spend any. So I'll say yeah. this. So for instance, my <laughs> first set of like eight cruises, they were because I was working for a company where that's how they treated us. So that was our gift every year, a cruise. And that's something affordable if you're going to send several people because cruises back in the day, and they probably are still now, especially now with COVID, were like two to $300. You could go to the Bahamas for three, what, four days, three nights, something like that. All you can eat, you get there. It's entertainment on the boat. It, I mean, it's affordable and it makes sense. And I, I don't knock it for anybody. I just say I don't want to do another one because I've been on several. The only cruise that I would say is for older people would be the cruise to Alaska. Because though I had an amazing time on that cruise, it was a lot laid back. It was not a party type of cruise. It was more... Play shuffleboard. Yeah. yeah. Dominoes at the table. I mean, we, like, the most excitement the electric side. Huh? I'll wait till I get old to do all that. That is one of my bucket list places. Um, Alaska. I want to see the Northern Light. That's the only reason I want to go. I want to see the Northern Lights and then get the hell up out of there. The yeah. Northern Lights <laughs> not always. There's no guarantee. You know, we all hope to go and see the Northern Lights, but thanks for shooting it down, Sauce. Cruise are nice. They're nice for old people. I, 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 um, I've never done a cruise. I don't have a desire to. Like, I'm too... My class reunion. I, I planned the um 15-year 15 15-year15 cruise. We had a great time. Like, I think... Yeah, you could have had a good that's time a, at your... That's a perfect city. Huh? You could have had a good time at your destination. You would have had a good time if y'all flew to Hawaii. Yeah, but I think I would really enjoy a cruise with my whole class. I mean, that's going to be a great yeah. time. Because when you... Yeah. If you go to a cruise, you have to have a a good group of people with you because that's going to be the whole experience. So if you had that same class, that the same group of people all at a resort in Hawaii, y'all, you don't think you would have had the same amount of fun? Uh, I don't uh, think they would interact the same way. They would not. They would not. Because, so because y'all were trapped on a boat. Yes. You, you, yeah. you can go up to your own thing on the resort. Can't jump off. Cruise. Well, you can, but, you know, hey, good luck to you. Right. <laughs> Everyone, your next five trips on your bucket list, the next five trips you got planned. I mean, I had an idea. I said from another question you did, I think we all throw out a place. It's kind of coming up on my 40th birthday. 
I'm throwing out Australia. Everybody else throw out a place. We put it in the random selector and just select it, and then we make sure we plan to go there together. I, I'm with it, though, Trail. Let's say two places a put two places a piece. I'm saying Bali and Australia. Everybody else get two places. We put it in the random selector, and then we we plan to show up there. All right. So those are your two. That's my two. And Saucy gonna write them down. Okay. She's such a good secretary. This is easy because your two, Travis, is my two. Well, I've been not sure. Don't, don't do that. Let me go again. Oh, oh, yeah. You mean a trip where you left me and Keely? I was just talking about <laughs> it for you. I was wondering if that was going to come up. Uh, uh, so, dang. Did you trip you left us? Well, knowing I was oh, planning and I wanted to go. Oh, that Instagram, when I saw that Instagram post. Bruh. I, I immediately sent her DM. I sent her a DM immediately. I'm like, we were just on the phone. Like, how, how you pop up? She, she already planned it. But y'all that planned it, she already plotted it. <laughs> the funny part it, was, I mean, on the it little takes a day to get there. And she tried Travis to get had the just got finished minute. talking about it. He was like, man, this is my dream trip. <laughs> he had just seen and she was it. like, yeah, she said, okay, so let's go. Let's later. do it. She's on the koala belt. We not going to do this again, okay? So, <laughs> dang. Your yes. two places. No, name your two. Uh, no, Zane go. For real, I Bali is the only thing that's on my on my list. Nothing well, else. Zane is going to still got to get two. I still haven't been to Toronto. I was supposed to go there this year. Uh, you know, there you go. Bali. Bali in Toronto. Drake, I mean, Drake. Drake is not there. So I mean, give me a real place. <laughs> you gonna pull it over your fist and it's gonna be Tory. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even like it. Don't don't do me like that. I I just want to go. I you know I like Canada. I, so I never been in Toronto. So I I it's on the list. I don't know. I don't I have anywhere right now that's like talking to me. Where I say, oh, I need to go there. It's at Bali. That's it. So then that means if you don't if you don't vote, then you don't have a say. Cause we all putting in the list of names and you gotta go with your one get selected. So you 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 have your opportunity to put in the little selector. Okay. All right, we'll come back to her. She's she, come back to me. Yeah, we'll come back to her. Go, Zane. Go. We'll let you bring uh, the person that takes the picture too. <laughs> 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 you stupid man. Uh, He's right. He is. Uh, <laughs> um, this is not coming. Uh, Ibiza. Is, 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 is this the first one? And then I, I got one that's not the blue part nobody's ever thought about. But uh, it's I, I, I've been fascinated with this city for like that was like a teenager. Um, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. I want to go. Oh. Yeah, I, I just every time I hear that, it makes me I start sweating. <laughs> well, you know, um, I, it was a movie. Um, um, what's that movie? Uh, Entrapment. And it was a, it was a, it was a, it was a dope scene where they were swinging across the building. And I just always wanted to go after I seen that one little scene. I'm gonna say too, but you already have one that I mentioned earlier. That's the French Riviera, and that is happening because that's going that's an IG trip for me. That's one where I'm going to be posted. Yes, I'm in Saint Tropez. Yes, I'm in at the Cannes Film Festival. Yes, I'm in Monaco at the Monaco Grand Prix, and I've already booked it because flexed it out because they're like a week apart. They're both in like May or March, May, and I think the Monaco Grand Prix is like a week after the film festival. But either way it go, you can put that one down. And two that I will name: one is Zanzibar, that's off the coast of Africa. And the only reason I, I have that one is because I had a couple of people keep bringing it up. Uh, but I'm trying to make sure the part where I messed up my hairline is not on. Um, I see every angle now. And the other one is the Canary Islands, just because it's off the coast of Africa, too. So those are the two, Canary Islands and Zanzibar. But the other one is going to happen. Like, like I already have that money to the side for the, yeah. for the other one. 
Like down to be in Monaco, like that's literally like yeah, millionaire's paradise. Really? Yeah, like the average income of people who live there, they're all millionaires. You talking about multi million dollar like five hundred foot condo? Like all you getting is a studio in the closet, and it's a million dollars. All right, go sauce. Oh, here she goes. I don't. I really don't have anything else. But if you want me to to like do a last like segue, I'll just say this. <laughs> um, I just think it's very important to take these trips, even if you have to take it alone. You know, one thing that I think that like this year has been very difficult for me for not traveling. Last year alone, I'm not gonna lie. I think I went on literally 14 trips, and I haven't been anywhere this year and that hurts. It really hurts. And I remember in November, I'll never forget. I was, I had an opportunity to, I was thinking about going to Costa Rica. I was going to take like a three, two days, three days quick at a free flight. I was going to have to find a, uh, a place to stay. And I remember the, the guy that I was dating, you know, he felt some type of way cause he couldn't go. So I almost didn't go. I was like, Okay, maybe I shouldn't go by myself, but you know, and I don't know at the last minute, I just booked the flight and I went. And when I say I had an amazing time, and that was the last trip that I went on. I haven't been anywhere else because COVID happened. And I just said to say that's why it's very important when you have an opportunity to travel, if somebody else can't go, go. You know, you never know what'll happen when you get there. I mean, I zip line on top of freaking mountains and saw volcanoes and saw waterfalls and and horseback ride through volcanoes like it was an awesome trip i met incredible people and i did it by myself within two days and again that was the last trip that i took and if i wouldn't have went i would have been devastated because that would have i i don't think i went on anything else months before then or a couple weeks whatever but i just think it's very important for people to take risks be open. And if there's an opportunity, don't always say, I got to wait on my friends to go, or I got to wait on my significant other to go. If you can go, go. Like, get out of that comfort zone and explore life, even if so, it's for a day or two. That's important. So instead of giving us your two, you gave us an after school special. I did. Yeah. I did. You still got to you still gotta give two. Why <laughs> I you know. Doing, why you, why, why you, you thinking of your two? two? I was going to say, I know Keely asked what changed my life on trips. When I was in Medellin, um, we met a, a, a student who was just there for a short period of time, um, you know, having dinner. And then this couple, like an older black couple, came over and had a conversation with us. And they just decided to move there. You know, they didn't have jobs or any of that type of stuff. But they'd been there for like a month. So just seeing them how that experience is kind of like what you said, Keely. I do want to move somewhere else as far as retirement. But I never really thought about it that way. But seeing somebody else actually doing it and doing it on a whim, and then they you can tell that they really enjoy life. That's something that changed me. Sauce. Yes. Spit out too. So I said, I mean, I said Bali, and I want to go back to Egypt. No, I said Bali. So you got to give two other ones. I literally on my list. I was there this year, and I couldn't go. Right. So, on so my Egypt list. is one. What's the other? Give me number two. Okay. I want to go to Antarctica. Y'all going to take a cruise with me? Because you got to take a cruise to go there. That would not get picked in the selector. I don't care how random it is, but we'll put <laughs> it in. Let's see. That's, <laughs> that's see you going against the rules. Because the rules are we're going to put it in something. You said you're going to put it in there. I'm just telling you the probability of it getting picked. So basically what you tell you is you're going to pick it and come out and you're going to pick again. Exactly. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I second that pick too. I'm like, I ain't, I ain't, that's, a, that's a whole other kind of cold right there. I want to go, but eh, it's not right now. I want to go. I, I just want to go before going to all the other ones. Like, if there's a hierarchy like that, let's be let's be serious. We named two, four, six, nine. I mean, Brazil. I've never been to Brazil. If 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 we're ranking them, it's it's probably Put not. Put Brazil in for. I Yo, the last two to because three that was one years. that I had scheduled in March <laughs> that got canceled. Wow. Yeah. So let's, I've never been anywhere in South um, South America. 
Yeah, I was just trying to make sure I've never been. I don't think I've ever been. No, I haven't. I haven't been to South America. How about this? Here's a compromise. Because those cruisers that go to Antarctica or whatever, typically leave the bottom of Antarctica. I mean, the bottom of South America. Exactly. So if we do Rio, I will travel to what is Argentina at the bottom. Mm-hmm. Then we we'll get travel from there. Oh, don't worry. I did. How, 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 how long? How long we gonna need? Rio didn't damn on that damn boat though. What? I you mean, that sounds that sounds like a good trip. Real, real quick though, it, it, here's my. I was just thinking, talking about trips. Is there anywhere in the U.S. that you want to go? Like some place you've never been that you want to go to the U.S. Just one place. You've never been. Go. Yeah, or somewhere where you want to go. This is gonna sound random and gonna sound lame. I I want to see Mount Rushmore. Cool, uh, cool. That's cool. Yeah, that would be nice. Well, what, what you I got, guess, sauce? I just want to see what it looked like. Yeah. You know, I I was trying to go through this same thought last year because I wanted to get away, and there's a lot of places in the United States that I've never been, and. I remember I ended up choosing New Mexico, which turned out to be a really good trip. So I'm trying to think what was my plan B if I couldn't go there. I've never been to Dakotas, either one of them. What's there? Mount Rushmore. Oh, okay. Well, then. You know what? I change it. I don't want to go to Mount Rushmore. I want to go to see Prince Museum instead. Oh, that was amazing. Yeah, I care more about Prince than I do about the president. Actually, I went, I was crying in there. It, it was so emotional. <laughs> that man was a genius. He's a legend. You know, he filmed movies, The Purple Rain in his house. Really? He's the man. He films, and I mean, if you get, when you go in the house, you can tell, oh yeah, they, they filmed in here. It's big enough. But, um, yeah, he filmed, he filmed that and he filmed some of Graffiti Bridge in the house. Mm-hmm. I don't know where else that I would want to go. Maybe Portland. I mean, I'm a little disappointed that we're not going to get to travel for a game. Like, I look forward to those moments. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's kind of heartbreaking. Um, I don't know exactly where this is. I, I have it saved in my um in a file. I got to go back and look at it. But there's this Indian reservation. It's somewhere near the Grand Canyon. But you have to... um. Fly to get to get access onto the reservation. It's a two-hour hike, and you go to this like natural spring. It's a trip I just want to do. It was, it was pretty cool. Let's do it all. Like, hey, you only get one life. Like, yeah. Yeah. let's do it all. Like, I don't care. Everyone, your top five favorite cities in the world, and we'll start with the, the beautiful young lady sauce. Top five oh, favorite cities in the world. I don't remember this question. So I guess I'll say Amsterdam because I loved it there. I loved um, my top five. I like Chicago. Yes, I should say some order too. Where is Amsterdam? Five or one? Vancouver. Where is Amsterdam? Five or one? Vancouver. Vancouver is five or one. Where 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 do these where 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 do they rank? Oh, I don't know. They just my thoughts. I gave you this sheet this morning. <laughs> I, I didn't get that question. I didn't get that question, TV. You're supposed to ask, can we travel alone or do we yeah. get our currency behind? I'm trying to skip around for the sake of time. Amsterdam, Zurich, Chicago, Atlanta, LA. How many is that? Vancouver. That's it. Those you are my favorite places. Participation. You get a C for participation. <laughs> All right, Zane. What's your top five? Number one, just because of the weather and location, San Diego. All right, that's one of my favorite places to go. Interesting. Why is it interesting? Amazing. I've never heard of anyone say San Diego. Man, <laughs> if, if I could afford it, I would retire to San Diego. Honestly, yeah. that's... I mean, the yeah, weather... Like, come mind, Keely, so... You never asked me that question because that was going to be one of my top cities. Well, you San named- Diego. I'm going to say San Diego, L.A., Rome. 
you can throw Greece in there because that, that was a great time. And then uh, I went to Chicago. Chicago. No, I'm for uh, Chicago New Year's back. That was cool. So. Oh, your top five? Yeah. All right, let's go, um, Trav. Well, I mean, I, 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 I didn't expect this question, but I can say San Diego is one of my top cities. I don't really, you, you guys know me, I don't really like to do favorites, but I'll just give you some cities that I like. San Diego is one that I wanted, I wanted to live. L.A. L.A. and New York, those are two places. Well, California, I'll say, as well as New York. I want to live in both of those places for at least one year. Um, I feel like as far as being in those environments, people move in shape. Um, that's something that I feel like will really change me again if I'm, if I'm in that environment. I love Miami. Y'all talking about beaches? You can't really beat Miami Beach. Um, okay. And I think also you can't beat, only think can't about South Beach. Miami Beach, so, but you can beat the beach. No, you can't beat the beach. So, but I'm saying you're talking about just South Beach itself, and you're talking about the main part of South Beach where everybody is. So for you're me, like when I work in um, Miami, I would always go to South Beach, but I would go to a different portion, and I would go to the part you know where it's, it's not crowded. Um, they have some really nice beaches. Right outside our hotels, you know, the jet skis and everything are right out there. When I wake up in the morning, I'm going to run on the beach, you know, so on and so forth. So I love Miami. It's an expensive trip if you don't know what you're doing. Um, but I also think it's very affordable. And, and I stay with the Hilton brand as well. If you do it ahead of time and you do it with the point, it doesn't take much at all unless you're trying to do it last minute. So you can stay in a really nice hotel and then it's food all along the beach, so on and so forth. I think I forget. I do like Chicago. I was trying to think it was one city in the U.S. that I really like that most people don't say. But, yeah, I like those cities. Mine. Miami enough. I think the last time I went to Miami was when I went. South yeah, I'm old. Las Vegas. Vegas oh, is my I'm favorite not, city man. in the U.S. Miami and Vegas, for me, are both cities in which I got to be with the right people. Yes. Like, yeah. just me going by myself, yeah. But, like, Miami is heavily dependent on who I go with. And same thing with Vegas. It de- heavily depends on who I go with. Because that's going to tell me, like, if you can really, en- really enjoy it like you're supposed to. But my five favorite cities that I'm talking about, lasting impression, London. What? Let me start. All right, Amsterdam, number five. Because it's just peaceful, man. Like, it's just dope. That's one of the places, like, I didn't expect it to be that dope, but it was. Four, I'll say Paris. I just I just really did. Like, I've been there twice, and both times I had a ball. Like, I haven't, I haven't been bored yet. Um, three, I would say New Orleans. I just have an emotional attachment to it because of how frequent and, you know, my people that's down there and the memories with my dad going down to New Orleans and the history of them and my mom going down there for the Falcon Saints rivalry game and just, man, I just love New Orleans because of the fact that I've spent so much time with people who from there and just gotten away from the French Quarter. Like, I feel like it's like a second home now. and it's just an emotional attachment to New Orleans. Number two, London. I want to retire there. I've been looking for jobs in London like, I really, like, I've been there twice. It should have been a third time this summer. <laughs> but it, to me, it's just really dope. And then number one is L.A. for me. Like, as many times as I've been to L.A., I've never gotten bored. I really, because it's like, it's just different aspects to it. Like, you got downtown, you got the Pacific Coast Highway, you got everything from Manhattan Beach to Santa Monica Pier to Venice Beach all the way up to Malibu. And then you got Hollywood, you got, like, it's just kind of different pockets and different vibes. And for me, it's aspirational, because I remember the first time I ever went, we kind of stayed in the the Manhattan Beach area. And I was just randomly, like, looking on Zillow, kind of like looking at the cost of the houses that were around me. And I was like, man, like, it was a, like, I went during the middle of, it wasn't a holiday, it was like during the middle of a week. And I'm like, why, why is everyone not at work? <laughs> you know, like people just 
out here chilling and staying in these multi-million dollar homes, that's what I want. Like you walk out and you're on the beach and you clearly don't have anything to do during business hours. And final yes. question, and we'll kind of um, recap. Yes, on the search trail. I was gonna say, you know, Houston is dope as well. I like Dallas, Dallas is cool, but I didn't say, I don't have favorites, but none of you guys said the best city in the US. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people hate on it, but it's Atlanta. I mean, yeah. I've been to a million uh, cities. Okay. Yeah. No, I didn't hear it, but, I, but it's I, nothing I, like Atlanta. Like, I mean, I've traveled all around the U.S. And I've stayed in those places for months at a time, worked in those places, but it's no feeling that I get. And when you come up, you know, in Hartsfield.